Hello and welcome again. So now we are ready to talk about uh, this asymmetric uh, crypto system called the uh, the RSA. And uh, now this is the first uh, asymmetric algorithm or public key uh, crypto system that we're gonna uh, talk about. Now this video is gonna be kind of like an introduction to the, uh, the to the crypto system. Some of the details here are gonna be left out because we're gonna discuss those things later. Now it's just kind of like an overview of what the system is to get you started on understanding what this RSA is doing. So the RSA was created by uh, Ronald Rivest, A.D. Chamer, and Leonard Adelman. And so the name RSA is coming because of the last name of these uh, creators. And it was created in 1977, so a little bit of history there uh, for you. Uh, so as I mentioned, the RSA is an asymmetric crypto system, or you can also uh, remember it's the same as calling a public key crypto system, which actually means that the key for encryption and decryptions are different. Now, we saw a picture of this earlier, which was the uh, beginning of the idea of the asymmetric crypto system. So we have the same situation. We have Alice here and Bob. And they want to communicate through an insecure channel here. And of course, Alice is always over here listening to this communication. Now, remember what I mentioned before is uh, if Alice wants to communicate with Bob, then Bob will have actually two keys. One that is called the public key, which can be seen by anyone. And so this is the one that people are going to use to encrypt messages to send to Bob. The other one is going to be the Bob's private key which is only known to Bob. So if Alice wants to send a message to Bob, the only thing she has to do is she has to grab this public key, Bob's public key, and encrypt the message uh, using this key here, which we represented by an unlock locked. And so she locks the, the message, which basically means she's going to encrypt it with this. So we're going to give exactly the details of what is this, what is this Bob's public key, in the bus private key in the RSA. So in this particular, in this particular uh, crypto system, the RSA will have a public key and a private key. Now let's discuss that a little bit more in detail. So what are those things here? So the the RSA, the encryption and decryption, is done in this set. Now remember, this is the set of ZN. We talked about this in previous videos is this finite collection of all the numbers from zero through n minus one for a fixed number n. And we're gonna discuss how you're gonna choose n later. So just for now, let's think about this n. Is, it's just a natural number. Now remember this collection here is just the possible remainders that you can get when you divide by n. Now, all encryption and decryption will be in this collection. That's why it was important to talk about this collection here in the previous videos because the RSA is all about this collection here, about this ZN. So how is the RSA going to encrypt plain text X? Now, as always, we're going to encrypt a string of characters, which is zeros and ones, as we represent everything in zeros and ones, or represent data. So X here is going to be the string of characters as always, or a string of zeros and ones, so it could be a, a byte, or it could be longer than that. Now remember, for the symmetric uh, cryptography, we had some kind of blocks here. And in this case, the block is not gonna be playing a big role here, only that X is just a bit string that I want to uh, encrypt, zeros and ones. And X will represent a number in this here. So this bit, this bit, a string here, so remember, any binary will represent a number, and you have to make sure that whatever X you choose to encrypt or decrypt or any kind of data, that has to be a number from here. So that is a restriction in the sense that, that we have the binary value of X, the one that I want to encrypt, that has to be less, strictly less than N. Otherwise, I cannot encrypt it with this expression with this collection here. So whenever you encrypt, you have to choose N. And once you choose N, there is a restriction on the plain text that you can encrypt with the RSA. The restriction is whatever 
the binary representation of that x is that value has to be less than than the end that the end that you chose all right so how do we actually do encryption once we have that we chose we choose an end and then there is a restriction about what kind of binary strings i can encrypt the binary representation again has to be less than this number n that we have here as you can imagine the uh, rsa encryption it is done with the public key the public key is the one that is you use for encryption as we let me scroll up over here so this is uh the public key is right here which any one can grab so you're gonna encrypt with this public key that's what you're gonna do. The encryption is done with the public key. So let me scroll down again. And how are you gonna do that? So X here is gonna represent a binary, uh, a string or just a number. So think about, from now on, think about X as a number. It could be in binary or it could be in any base. So it doesn't matter. Okay, so the public key, so what is the public key here? This is the first time here we're gonna talk about the specifics of what the public key is. Now the public key for RSA it's gonna be a pair of numbers, a pair of natural numbers in this case. So whenever I say numbers here, I mean natural numbers. I'm gonna have two numbers, N and E, that's gonna be the public key. So that's what everybody knows. Everybody knows this public key for Bob. So this is the public key for Bob. If it is Alice, and you, Alice might have another public key. So how is gonna be the encryption? The encryption is gonna give me another number. So I start with this number X here, and the encryption goes like this. So if I have N and E, which is the public key, which is known by everyone, in particular is known by Alice, what you do is the following thing. To get the cipher text from there, what you do is you take your plain text X to the E power, to the E power, and then you mod by N. So basically what you do is you take this power and you compute the remainder that is left after you divide by n. That remainder, you call it y, that is your cipher text. So, so let me say that again. So you have the public key, which is a pair of numbers, n and e. You take the plain text to the e power, to the second component of this key, and you mod it by n, which is the first component. So it means you're gonna take the remainder, what you divided by n, that remainder, you're gonna call it Y, that is your cipher text. That's the message that you're gonna send through the channel. So in here, what I have is the picture. So again, the public key is N, E, it's a pair of numbers. Now, assuming that Alice is the one that is sending the messages to Bob, of course, Alice has to grab the public key of Bob, and Alice wants to send some plain text, which is already a number, which is a binary, or think about it uh, in decimal. It doesn't matter, because these all operations they're gonna give you exactly the same thing, just a different representation of the number. So X is a number. You take, uh, of course, N and E are known to everybody, in particular are known to Alice. So Alice is gonna do this. It's gonna take X, the plain text, take the exponent, and then the remainder divided by N. That number that you see here, that's gonna give you another number Y. That is the ciphertext, the remainder. Now that particular Y is gonna be sent through the insecure channel. So it's gonna go from here, it's gonna send it to Bob. So Bob is gonna get that value Y here. He's gonna get it over here. So that's the process of encryption. Now the process of decryption is done with the private key because only Bob here will be able to decrypt using his private key, which is this private key here. Now this private key here is an abstract here, but now I'm gonna tell you what it is. And as you can guess, it's just another number. So the RSA decryption is done with the private key. Now the private key is a number D, this is another number. So what's gonna happen here is Y is the cipher text, which is the number that Bob is getting through the insecure channel. So it's gonna be Y. And so what he's gonna do is another kind of similar thing. He's gonna take that cipher text to the D power. Now remember that D here is the private key of Bob and gonna do again modulo N and that's gonna give him back X. Now, how is that possible? That is possible because there is a particular way in which you can choose N, E, and D. So if we're gonna do that. We have to, we have to say how to choose N how to choose E, 
and how to choose D. So when Bob does this, he gets back exactly the value X that you see here. So that's what I said here. N and E are in and N, E, and D are chosen such that when you take this exponent, y to the D, and then you divide it by N and take the remainder, it gives you back this uh, plain text that you see there. So that's what Bob is going to do. So this is the picture again. So Bob is going to say y to the D, and then divide it by N, look at the remainder, and he's going to get back the plain text here. So basically what we are saying is that the public key for Bob is going to be a pair of numbers, N and E, and the private key is going to be another number. Now you see all of this is about modulus and congruence. So everything we saw earlier, all the theorems, all the properties are going to be used in all this process. So this is a very mathematical kind of numerical way of doing encryption decryption. Now, so in practice, uh, what are the numbers X N, and D. Now, you want to do this in practice. What X is the a plain text, Y is the cipher text, N and D, N and D, N, is, N here is part of the public key, and D, remember, is the private uh, key. You want to choose these numbers, X, Y, N, and D, to be a large number. And the reason for that is because it's going to make it more secure if they're large numbers. If they're small numbers, it's really insecure. And you want to choose them so they add at least uh, 10, 24 bit or more. So because you want that to be secure. Now E here, remember E is part of the public key. It's usually referred as encryption exponent or public exponent for obvious reasons because E, N, and D are the public key. And of course D is going to be called the encryption exponent or the private exponent for again obvious reasons. Now, as you can see here, I haven't said much about how to choose N, E, and D. And that's very key, the very key part of everything that uh, the RSA, for the RSA to work is how to choose properly the public key and the private key so everything is going to work. Because uh, you can always do this here, X to the E mod N, and you get a, a cipher text. But how do you make sure that when you do this exponentiation here, moduloing, you get back the plain text. And this is gonna work, and the reason it's gonna work is because all we have done about number theory before. So again, the only thing I wanted to take out of this video is that the public key is and a pair of numbers, the private key is a number, and all the process of encryption decryption is basically doing modulo n or looking at remainders, which is basically doing things in Z n and that, uh, a ring that we talked about earlier. So I'm going to stop the video now and then the next video we continue looking at this RSA in a little bit more particular on what we're going to do with this crypto system. So I will see you in the next video.